Hey, math students, let's, uh, let's talk parametric equations a little bit more. So in the last video, we introduced the concept of parametric equations, and we, uh, and we looked at a couple of, uh, of lines that were defined by parametric equations. So this time I want to look at some, well, some different equations, like, uh, like this one behind me right here. Uh, t is our parameter, and x is defined to be t minus 1 over 2, and y is defined to be t plus 1 squared. And what I want to do is I want to go from this to, uh, to y being a function of x. Okay? Or if not y being a function of x, just some equation where, uh, where we have x's and y's and no t's. So how are we going to do this? Well, uh, let's do the same thing we did last time, which is uh, solve this one for t. So that means 2x is going to be t minus 1, and t will be 2x plus 1. Okay? Now I'm going to take uh, what I have for t here, and I'm going to put it right in there where I see the t. So now I'm going to have y equals 2x plus 1 plus 1 squared, which is 2x plus 2 squared. And if I factor out a 2 squared, which is 4, I get 4 times x plus 1 squared. And I know what that looks like. That is a parabola that's been stretched up by a factor of 4, and it's scooted over to the, uh, to the left um, one unit. Okay, so the, uh, so the vertex of that parabola is at the point negative 1, 0. All right, well, that was easy enough. Let's take a look at another one. Let's do, uh, let's say I have x equals 1 over the square root of t, is it minus 3? Yeah, minus 3. And y equals negative 2t over t minus 3. Do the same thing. Take this function here, or take this equation here, solve for t. So let's see. Uh, if I multiply both sides by the square root and divide both sides by x, I get the square root of t minus 3 equals 1 over x. And then t minus 3 must equal 1 over x squared. So t is 1 over x squared plus 3. Okay? Now, some of y'all might be looking to be going, Whoa, hold it. You just squared both sides. You've got to be careful when you square both sides. That's true. You do. Uh... Come back here. Um, I have x equals 1 over the square root of something. Now, the square root of anything is going to get you a, uh, a positive number, well, a non-negative number, 0 or bigger. And since my square root's actually in the denominator, that means it has to be a positive number. It has to be greater than 0. And 1 over a number greater than 0 is also a number greater than 0. So that means x must be bigger than 0. Okay? I write that because it's going to be, uh, it's, it's, it's going to be important in just a second. So now let's take this uh, equation for t, and I'm going to put it here and here. Okay? So y equals negative 2 times this monster, 1 over x squared plus 3 over that monster, 1 over x squared plus 3, minus 3. Well, I see something I can do real fast. Plus 3 minus 3, now nah, get rid of those. And now we're dividing by 1 over x squared, which is the same thing as multiplying by x squared. So this means y equals negative 2x squared times 1 over x squared plus 3. And that's just y equals negative 2, uh, minus 6x squared. Okay? And I know what that is. That is a, uh, that's a parabola uh, whose uh, vertex is at the point 0, negative 2, and it's opening up downward. Except, remember this? Remember the fact that x has to be greater than 0? It means it's actually just half of that parabola Matter of fact, it's not even zero. I'm going to put a little empty circle right there. There we go. That's, that looks better. 
Uh, let's do another one. And, uh, you know, all these square roots and rational functions and everything makes me miss trigonometry. So let's do one where x is the cosine of t and y is the sine of t. Now, on this particular one, I'm going to change strategies. I'm not going to recommend that we, uh, that we solve this for t. Instead, I'm going to think, what's one of the most fundamental characteristics of sines and cosines? That Pythagorean identity, right? The fact that the cosine squared plus t plus the sine squared plus, sorry, cosine squared of t plus the sine squared of t equals 1, right? Well, cosine squared is just going to be x squared, and sine squared is just going to be y squared. So there you go. There's our equation. x squared plus y squared equals 1. And I know what that is. That's a circle. That's a circle with the center at the origin with a radius of 1. So as long as we're doing, uh, as long as we're doing some trigonometry, let's... Uh, Let's do some more trig, but let's, let's spice it up a little bit. Let's say that x is 2 times the cosine of t plus 3, and y is going to be 5 times the sine of t minus 4. Now, yeah, all right, that gives us something to chew on. Again, uh, let's solve this not for t, but for the cosine of t, and we'll solve this for the sine of t. We'll say cosine squared plus sine squared equals 1, We'll see what we get from that. So that means this is going to be uh, x minus 3 equals 2 cosine of t. So x minus 3 over 2 equals a cosine of t. And over here we have y plus 4 equals 5 times the sine of t, which means uh, y plus 4 over 5 equals the sine of t. Now remember, cosine squared of t plus sine squared of t equals 1, right? Okay. That means this thing squared, which is x minus 3 squared over, we'll call that 4, plus, now we're going to square this, y plus 4 squared over, let's call that 25, equals 1. And wow, we just went straight into the formula for an ellipse. An ellipse whose center is the point 3, negative 4, whose major axis uh, is uh, 5 units, well, actually 10 units long. Um, minor axis is uh, 4 units long. And by the way, what I'm doing is I'm taking the square root of this and then doubling it. And, uh, all right. Pretty good, huh? Uh, so we have been taking parametric equations and we've been converting them to equations just involving x and y, and I hope this helps. In the next video, I'm going to show you, I'm going to answer a little bit of the so what behind parametric equations, because you might be wondering, why would anybody ever use this thing? I'll show you in the next video, okay? See ya.